Check out my old friend, the Yamaha Rex 50 Multi Effector. It's from 87 and it has the weirdest digital distortion and crazy pitch shifter. I'm gonna show you sounds of it later, but today is the teardown. I had to replace these two buttons, this button, and I had to clean this pot on the back that's brown. Look at this fella. This didn't work at all, but I sprayed it clean and it was cool again. It needed a new backup battery, and I broke a line of the display trying to add my own backlight. But don't freak out, I ordered a new display that has a backlight built in, so we're gonna put that in in the future. Stay tuned and soon I'll show you the crazy sounds this thing makes. When Yamaha designed this device, they forgot this wire and had to add it later in production. You can tell they didn't expect these capacitors to be so tall because in the lid of the case, it was clearly cut out separately from the stamp and it goes deeper. Check it out. When the plastic was molded, they had to add this bump to the mold to make that relief in the plastic. This Burr Brown DAC. This company is famous for nice sounding DBX compressors and stuff. This DAC is a weird one though. It's only 31K. It doesn't go up to 44K like a CD. It is 16 bit, but the frequency response is only 20 Hertz to 12 kilohertz. And I don't like really troubling guitar, so this fellow's perfect for me. The other weird thing about how this DAC works, this chip supposedly multiplexes between using the DAC for in and out, depending on the cycle. So it chops up the wave a little differently than a modern DAC would. Stay tuned for more gizmos. Okay, squeaky wheels. In the last episode, we broke this display trying to put a backlight on it, and then I broke it a little more trying to remove it. But we got a new display here on eBay. Look at that shiny new green. But this one has a backlight in it. So I ran power to the backlight from this little tiny DC to DC converter from eBay too. All this stuff is just a couple bucks. That's getting power from the input of this 7805 regulator. So before the power goes into it, about 14 volts, it gets turned into the very weirdly exact 4.2 volts that this display wants for the backlight. With this little tiny trim pot on there, you turn that little thing with a flat screwdriver and that's how you change the actual voltage. I turned it a little lower yet to make this not so bright. I don't like a bright display. Oh! Boo, 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 boo. Inside one of these chips is a little part called a die. That's the actual silicon with the tiny circuit in it. This new screen, they put the die right on the back of the circuit board and just blobbed epoxy on top of it. So it's a lot cheaper to make. So because this screen has an LED there, I'm going to do just a little bit of cutting and bending of that bottom metal holder piece there so that the LED connections there didn't short against that metal. Don't know if you can see it, but I pushed the pins down, heated them up, pushed them further into the board, and bent those metal plates over. So it should be further in there now. That helped a little, but I'm actually going to add a couple washers to give it a little bit more breathing room. The other bonus is the old screen was a futuristic gray. This one's a very 80s green. And it's a green in the dark, too. Oh yeah, very period correct. Ooh. These are called linear regulators, and they get hot and aren't as efficient, but they're very low noise. Whereas this guy has a little bit of a high frequency noise it can emanate, and that's why it's over here in the power section, and not over here by the signal stuff like I first was going to put it. I just realized the new screen is a little thicker. I'm actually going to add a couple washers, so we might have a little bit more panel gap, but no one's going to see. These fellas get really hot, and I want the heat to go to the top here. So I'm giving them the thermal paste. I can actually see the goo up in there. Ooh. 